Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to ROM Hacking on the Sega Genesis. Uh, quick little note before we get started here. I am now going to be starting my playthrough of the game, and you know I'll be I'll be posting little updates, little highlight reels uh, as I play through the game. But that's going to go in a different playlist. I've created the playlist. It's empty right now, but it should have videos in it by the time you see this video. So. Uh, you can check the description for the link to this, and you can check that out if you're interested. And just a little, I'm gonna try to keep them short and snappy and condense a lot of the gameplay. Now, onto the main event here. We are finishing up. I'm just showing you guys the stuff that I'm going to be watching while I play through the game. And in this video, I'm gonna show you all the breakpoints that I'm going to be setting. So, there's two classes of breakpoints. Number one is I'm going to trap every time the game reads from character attributes to try to map out exactly all the places where these attributes are being taken into account. And I got a whole system for doing this. So I created a script here, and we can see here there's a whole bunch of watch points being set, memory watch points. And these are all corresponding to the different attributes, or whatever you want to call them, the stats of you know the, the four characters in my party. And I'm also going to be watching enemies as well. So we'll see the stats, strength, and whatever, all these stats, plus level, because level is often taken into account in various actions. And only when you read them, it's going to check if you read them. And it is going to print out this message, and it's going to break. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this shortcut when I play through the game. And it is going to start, you know, it's enabling debugging, and it's going to load my debug script right when I start the game up. Also set the resolution because I always have to set that down. But uh, yeah, it's going to be very nice. So let's take let's take a quick little look at what that's going to be like. So you start this up, you see right away sets a bunch of breakpoints, and we we are in there. We're ready to go. All right, so we go load game. Let's just load one of these ones here. Now when I load the game, it's automatically going to hit a breakpoint, and it's just some place I don't know what this is. But if I look at my console here, I can see. Elf 1 level. So it has read the level from the elf at this address here. So B8 F8. Then if I press F5 to continue, B8 F8 is also reading the strength. And we can just see that it's going to read all of the stats from all of the characters. And it's the exact same instruction that's doing that for all of them. Now, the second component to what I'm doing here is okay, so I know B8 F8 is going to be doing that loading. This is interesting because it's a comparison function. So it's loading from A0 and then A1. It's I I don't exactly understand it perfectly, but that doesn't matter. The most important thing is that I just, you know, make a note of it. So every time I hit one of these points, I'm going to make a note. I'm going to do at dollar sign and that's just to show that this is one of my attribute breakpoint annotations and it's for all attributes. I'm going to say this happens during load game. So, we'll add a little note in there, and we'll continue. We're just going to press F5, we go through the cleric, the thief, and we're in here. Oh, this is actually not my my party that I made, this is just the default party. So the, the labels don't line up, but that's fine. It's not a big deal here. So walking around, I'm not hitting any breakpoints, that's expected. If I were to go into the menu, I would expect to hit a breakpoint as it loads those things. But we're not going to do that right now. Let's, uh, let's go into the dungeon. So... So far, it's not reading any of those values. And as I go in here, and looks like the monster attacked me. So here we see enemy one level. One, two, two, three, A. It's interesting, it's clearing the memory at that pointer there. I don't know, I don't know what that's doing, but we'll do at star enemy beast man attacks. All right. Let's continue on to the next breakpoint if there's one. Enemy strength at 1, 2, 2, 3A. You know, I find it interesting that this is tripping a read breakpoint here because it's it's not reading, right? It's It seems like it's writing. It's very, it's, it's interesting to me. It's very interesting. It's so level strength, int, whiz, dex, con, charisma. And so it's basically all of the stats. So we should then change this. Now, 138B4. Now, this is interesting. This is some kind of dex lookup into a table, and it's branching 
comparing to some nine value here. It's very interesting here. I don't know what's going on, but I am intrigued. So now we're reading the enemy level. Now this looks like a melee attack routine, but um, it's not the one that we charted. This is a different one. Ah, very interesting. We're reading the enemy level again from a different place. And this is just the routine that we charted, so don't have to worry about that one too much. And let's continue, F5. Enemy strength, but at a very different address here. Ah, this is mine own code. So I definitely don't want to chart this, but I do want to think about it. And it, now it runs, so we, we got through one attack there. Now, we just logged a bunch of different um, accesses, and as, at this point you might be wondering, Chili, it's going to be very annoying to play through the game if it's breaking at all these different points. Even after I've logged the, the values into uh, my listing here, I still have to hit the F5 every time it breaks, and that could be like multiple times per action. So here's, here's what we do. Well, first let me show you something cool. So we're going to search for at dollar sign, search all, and this is going to give me a list of all the ones that I've already charted. It also gives me their locations. Now, what I want to do is, okay, so in my debug script, for example, here I see, so when a player is attacked, their dexterity is checked. So that's address 138B4. So now I go into here, and here's this, this number here is the condition. So right now it just always breaks, or always triggers this uh, line here. So instead, what we want to do is we want to say, okay, so this is the dex one, and we want to say, you know, address is not equal to 138B4. We can compress that down a little bit. And then we'd have to do that for each one of these, each one of the dexes, for each one of the characters here. And for example, this one is all attributes, so for all of them I would add them in here and I would just concatenate them with AND. Now as you can imagine, given like the number of watch points we have here, this would be incredibly annoying to maintain. You'd probably make mistakes, you'd skip some. Which is why I have this little Python script here. So I use the Jinja templating engine. And I have my template here. So I set up a macro to template. This templates out a single watch point line, but it loops through variables in here for all the characters and all the attributes. And so if I want to, for example, exclude an address for dexterity, I would just type it in this array here. And if I want to exclude an address for all attributes, I would type it in here. And this will build up my exclusion. So let's, uh, let's do that quickly here. I have my list of addresses already built up, uh, if I can freaking find it. And so here's my list of addresses, and so I'm going to refer to that B8F8, that is the stuff that's done when you load. 1223A, that is for the, when the Beastman attacked me, it looked at all of the attributes from there. 138B4, this was the dexterity check on the character being attacked. I don't understand that, but I'd be interested in looking into it at some point. 13952 for level, the beast man triggered that one when he attacked me. And then 1429E, this is within the, um, within the melee routine that I've already charted. So, now we have these excludes added. I can template this out, and then if we look at the output, it, writ it wrote to a file, but it also wrote to standard output. Now we can see for all my watch points, I have PC not equal to this, PC not equal to this, PC not equal to this. Oh yeah, it wasn't address, ADDR, it was actually PC, because it's, um, it's the current instruction being executed, that's what we want to do for our exclude. So it generates this all out very nicely, it's very easy for me to keep track of them in here. Now one additional thing is I don't want to track any addresses in my extension. So anytime I write out one of these watch points, I want to add in there um, PC should be less than 100000. And then if we have any attribute excludes or global excludes, which we always will, but it's good to put this check in here. So if the sum of these is greater than zero, then we have to do an AND to concatenate with the 
the future ones here. All right, so now if I run this, I should see, yeah, PC. Oh, wait a minute, we've got a, we've got a problem here, Houston. Got a rogue new line that is not gonna fly. Run that again. All right, so now PC has to be less than one megabyte and, and, and. Now one little issue I'm gonna run into here, I think, and this might, this might actually just blow up this whole system that I've got, is I don't know how long this can be, but as I add exclude addresses, it's gonna grow very long. And at some point, I fear that the emulator is just gonna say, no, that command is too long and you're dumb. And if that happens, I'm just gonna have to give up this whole idea because I don't see another way around it. The only other way around it is for me to actually, you know, get the source code for MAME and, you know, build something in there to do this sort of stuff. All right, so now that we've updated our script here, let's just, uh, let's close the game. Uh, we'll get rid of this for now. And I just want to run it again. And uh, we'll see if it, it should now not hit those breakpoints. So the basic idea of this is that as the, when you first start, you're going to be breaking all the time. But as you add your exclude addresses, you'll be breaking less and less often. All right, so now if I load, all right, what the hell? It's, it stopped at the breakpoint. Um, that's not supposed to happen. Let me check the, uh, the output again. Now, it could be that the address it's checking is actually the address after the, the thing has been executed, the instruction which is mildly annoying, but not a huge deal. So this would be B8FA. All right, so we run this again, and let's try loading the game. All right, and now it loads fine. So we do have to input the address after the instruction of the breakpoint. Uh, slight, slightly annoying, but it does work. All right, so we're gonna try this, and hopefully it allows for very long conditions. Otherwise, like I said, it's, it's not gonna work out for us. So that's the main thing that's being done here, but there is also some breakpoints here that correspond to stuff that I'm not quite sure about in the code. So things that I have a guess about or things I have no idea about in the areas that I've reverse engineered. I've added breakpoints so I can understand when those branches are hit. And just like for the attributes, and wherever I put those breakpoints, I've added a tag so I can search, search all, and I see all the places that I am watching in here. I can see them in my listing here, a nice list. Very nice. All right, here's a, here's a little test I should have done a little earlier before doing all this stuff. Let's just see if I put like a bunch of conditions in here, like this many. That's quite a few already. How is the debugger going to like this? Is it going to throw an error? All right, so that super long line, it didn't give me an error. So I actually have a little bit of hope now that this is not going to shit the bed. And I should be able to use this very well. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little enhancement here. Right now I can set um, an exclusion per attribute, and that will work for all the characters. I can set a global exclusion, which will do it for all characters, all attributes. But I'd like to have more levels of um, control. Like I'd like to be able to just set an exclusion that only works for enemies, that only works for player characters. So we'll, I'll, I'll add some more options in here. But the basic idea is now sketched out. So now I can get down to just you know kind of playing the game. It'll be slow going at first. I'm gonna hit a lot of breakpoints. But as I chart things out, it will become smoother and smoother. I won't do any videos on all that charting stuff. I might call out a few every now and then, but what I will do, and you'll see these coming out every now and then, are just little recaps of uh, what I've done playing through the game. So look forward to that, and uh, yeah, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click the like button, it helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more ROM hacking.